Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, multi-talented recording artist, musician, and actor, Casey Abrams. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, everyone? Yes, yeah, that time, another exciting episode of The Rich Redmond Show coming to you, this time from three cities. I'm in sunny Los Angeles. My co-host, Jim McCarthy, jimmccarthyvoiceovers.com, is coming from South 65, south of Nashville. And Jim, we got a really special... All our guests are special, but I mean, I got a really good feeling. Like, I like this guy. I mean, I barely met him, and I just like him. I want to hang out with the guy. I want to have coffee. But he's a composer, singer, songwriter, bass player, instrumentalist. You might know him from seeing him on an American Idol season 10. He even does a little acting. We got so much to talk about. My new friend, Casey Abrams. What's up, man? Yo, guys, it's good to be here, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll hang some someday. But uh, yeah, we're we're hanging right now, and I'm really we got to play some music. Yeah, because I asked you, I said I'm coming to from uh, from West Hollywood, and you're like, yeah, I'm usually in those parts, but you're just kind of visiting family now, huh? I well, I yeah, I'm I'm living with my parents, man, because guess what? The tour industry isn't yeah. what it used to be. They're like, we so, can't shake this kid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. I know. I said I'm literally in my dad's office right now. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say it was like, uh, Kay- Casey, we saved your bedroom just the way it was. We've got all your high school <laughs> trophies. Well, actually, high school wasn't very long ago. You're such a young man. You're still in your twenties, are you not? Uh, yeah, I'm. Lit- I'm at the end of my twenties. I'm uh, 29, and nice. my birthday's in February. So that's in like yeah, three three months, I think, right? It's coming up, man. Who's counting, though, man? We've been in quarantine. I'll I'll be honest with you, though. I don't know how you feel, but quarantine, I don't know. It's been kind of, it's a blessing in disguise. I'm getting work done. Yep. Uh, Again, I get to see family, and I'm, you know, I'm seeing my grandmother every Saturday. We're watching Lawrence Welk, you know, on PBS. Great times. And, and dude, I don't know. It's kind of flown by for me, so. Yeah. I don't know. How how are you feeling? I mean, seven months have you have come, have really come and gone, and I've been spending it you know, out, out here with my girlfriend. The main thing is, is that there's, as for guys like us, you know, we wear a lot of hats. We're creative souls. There's always something to do. My main thing is, is that if, hey, if you're going to live in California, you got to get out and get that vitamin D every day, or what's the point of paying right. these high prices? Like, I get out there and I do my five-mile run, and it's great. Oh, it's just wow. my time with the universe, you know? Do you do it every day? I try to do it every day. My, and my girlfriend, Kara's like, you used to have an ass, and it's gone. You <laughs> ran it off. And I was like, what? No, I still got a butt. Oh, man. Hey, let's see it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you ran your ass off? <laughs> yeah, you ran your ass off. That's funny, man. I'm trying to, you know, I, I thought two miles a day was great for me, but I, I'm going to have to catch up to you. Hey, man, anything is good. And, you know, I've got this Nike app, which is really, really cool. And it, and it basically- Nike, you're on Fit Club, right? Yeah. And you could, yeah. You're, you know, only thing I, do, I don't like doing is I don't like locking music up with it because it, it changes the tempo of the music sometimes, but not, but the, the pitch is, gets all squirrely. I don't know if they've locked that in yet. So it sounds you know, like you're- I I don't use the I don't use the music fun- function. I I love just uh, I run in the nature, man, and look at the birds and see the deer. So I I don't know. There's something about it. I can't run with headphones on either. So yeah, I, I like to be astute and just see what's going on. But be, if, be, if, I'm on tre- if I'm on a treadmill, I need me some music. <clears> though, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we need to bring back the headphones with the antenna on them, like from Starsky oh. and Hutch. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, I agree. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, you should just set up well, a candid the camera. Ben Stiller one. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> Do it. So, Casey, you you know, I it's so funny. I You were pitched to me from your publicist. And so I was like, mm-hmm. God, I hope he remembers because I sent the link so last minute. I hope she passed the word on to him because I didn't have your contact information. But really, the, the, the main thing is, is you've got something to promote and we should just like knock it out right away so we can talk Let's about do that. Your, yeah, history, good idea. your projects and all that kind of stuff. So tell me, this is like, there's a wartime song that has been covered several times, The Eve of Destruction. It's going way back. And you gave it a facelift with your friend, Cindy Lauper, and you wrote a new verse. Am I correct? We yeah we wrote a couple new verses. We left a lot of it in, but you know we we, we put in some some we changed a couple of the rivers that were uh, you know made sense for those times, and we we put it to these times. Um, my my favorite one is if, if you cross the man, 
Um, his, his words are scathing, and we're obviously talking about the uh, the man when we're talking about the man that runs the country. So you know, gotcha, it's like that gotcha. kind of stuff. We're 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 talking about all the crazy stuff that's happening, and we're we're relating it to like the war of the time of of you know in the '60s to what's happening with the pandemic here. You know, there's a lot there's a lot of crazy stuff happening, especially in 2020. So we 2020 would the eve of destruction, or yeah. the eve of destruction 2020. Who is the original original artist? Oh man! Uh, Hold on. <laughs> I don't know. I look Jim's, it up. I always Jim's got his it. Name. Jim's got Jim's going to get it. But it's it's a wonderful recording. And how did um, you align with uh, Miss Cindy Lauper? Barry McGuire. Barry McGuire. Barry McGuire. Yeah. 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 And I think I think someone else wrote it. I I always I always forget. But uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> P.F. Sloan. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Barry Maguire. Yeah. He was a very big protester. It, it's funny. Cause yeah, my mom, my mom had shown me that, that song and we were, we were talking about it. And then I was talking to my, my label guy, the guy that we actually did uh, the uncovered EP with. And he yeah. was like, you know what, why don't you just do that song? And I was like, e well, could, should we update the lyrics? We weren't sure at first. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we, 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 we went in the studio actually around March, we recorded it. And, uh, and it was just me on the track for, at first. And then, you know, maybe about two months ago, we we're like, let's release it maybe like right before the elections. So, cause it's really relevant at that point. Sure. And, uh, two weeks before the elections were happening, uh, for somehow, somehow Cindy, uh, he, my, my record label guy just hit me up and was like, listen to this. <laughs> and it said Casey Abrams featuring Cindy Lauper. I was like, what are you, how did that even happen? Right. You know? That's, that's incredible. Like I've been listening to her, uh, since I've, since I could sing and since I could listen to music, man, yeah. uh, the, if you call, I will catch you. I'll be waiting. Oh my, come on. Time after time. That'll never yeah. get old. So good. Yeah. So, I, so it's like, I went from pretending to do wet with her to do wedding with her. I mean, you reap what you sow. <laughs> it's literally the law of attraction. And I, I guess that'll give it some more steam because she's an icon and she's, you know, so well known. And I've got a funny history with her going back because I have two yeah. drummer friends of mine, Sandy Gennaro, who basically toured with her for a long time in the heyday. And then my friend Sammy Marandino, uh, and they're both New Yorkers and they both have done time in her band. And when the rehearsals were happening for Kinky Boots, I went and got to crash one of the rehearsals. Like oh. we're talking the early days with the dance were just figuring out their steps and putting it all together wow. pretty incredible oh my gosh yeah, yeah it's man. funny it's good it's good it's it says something about her her style because I, I i definitely heard about kinky boots before i even knew it was a cindy lopper uh production so it's like man she puts out good some really good stuff and that yeah. that musical has been killing it oh god yeah and then yeah. All, the, all these poor broadway musicians man they're just all of a sudden it's just like and unemployment I've been, I've been i've been talking to a lot of them yeah man there a lot of them are hanging out with their parents too <laughs> you know so it's <laughs> it's like what do you do but it's it, yeah it's family time it's family time now it's not broadway time it is family time you know if i live with my mom i would be the size of the fat elvis i mean it would be carb city <laughs> she's italian so it's like the last name's paradiso so like you know paradiso. we went there with my girlfriend kara you know kara's half italian so we, it was like three gorgeous meals a day and then snacks and then happy hour for sunset with the wine. And we're like, Oh my God, I got to run 10 miles a day just to keep this, <laughs> you know, right. If I was with my mom, but I mean, now you, you, so you're on American Idol, but before that you're originally from Austin. Am I, am I correct? You're correct. I was, I was born there and yep. I, um, I was born in, uh, Austin, Texas. And, yeah. uh, for about four years, I was there, and yeah. then I moved to Chicago. So I, I've been I've been kind of everywhere. So then um, from four to ten, I was in Chicago, Evanston, and Wilmette, kind of really close to Chicago. And then I moved to Idlewild, California, when yeah. I was about ten. Have you heard of Idlewild? For sure. I mean, yeah. Austin and that location; those are two very kind of like creative synergy. I I don't want to say hippie man, but it's there's like the creativity yeah, flows like ayahuasca. <laughs> I still need to get I still need to try that I yeah I, the whole thing with throwing up and I don't know I don't know if I want to do that yeah, yeah. One, <laughs> one of these days it's, it's on the bucket list I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it yeah, so tell us days. about Idlewood man what was that like it was 
incredible actually i'm uh it's the 10 year anniversary for our season uh next year so i'm actually working on a really cool project where i'm, I'm going around and just just talking to each one of the contestants that was on the show with me Amazing. and we're just showing him old pictures so that's gonna you're, you're gonna see more of that uh, in the future, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. And looking back at these pictures, it was one of the most, it, I mean, until something else happens, man, it was the peak of my life. You know, it was, it was insane. I'm sure more awesome things will happen, but man, you know, a million billion people are watching you every, you know, every Tuesday and Wednesday night, yeah. and then you're singing for your life. It's, it's really fun. And people start knowing you, people recognize you on the street. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I love the attention, man. Oh, are you uh, kidding me? You get the yeah. preferential treatment at the coffee house and the, and the restaurant, you know? What about the coffee house? Yeah, preferential what? treatment when people recognize you. They're like, yeah. aren't you Casey <laughs> yeah. Basie? Dude, mm -hmm. over here, you're going to have the best seat in the house right here. <laughs> <laughs> and how perfect i remember coming up with that name casey basie on the show i was always spacey casey and then uh, then they're like hey what's your twitter handle i was like i guess i play the bass is yeah casey basie you know you play so the I hell think. out of the bass i mean randy jackson said you're one of the i don't know the exact quote but he said you were probably one of the best musicians that has ever been on american idol oh yeah no oh, I, wow. coming from him well he's a bass player too coming yeah. from him that really meant a lot Good research. Man. Well, there's not a lot of bass players that play all the axes you play and can sing so incredibly well. I guess Joe Cocker is an influence for you. He's huge. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Especially the rough voice. But uh, you did, so I know that you're saying Jim plays a little drums, right? Yeah, I and, do. And, 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 but do you do you play anything? Anything crazy? Oh, like me? Yeah, Rich, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, so I'm a drummer, uh, but nothing crazy. Like, I mean, me, me perf, uh, you know, I've been a drummer since Dinosaurs, dinosaurs Roam the Earth, uh, <laughs> 1976. I picked up my sticks, you know, a little blue sparkle snare drum. But, you know, I'm just jealous of guys okay. like, like <laughs> yeah, I'm just jealous <laughs> of guys like yourself that can, um, you know, accompany themselves. You'll never be out of the work. I mean, the worst case it would ever, 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 ever be for you is you're doing a gig at the airport and you're playing standards and you're accompanying yourself and there's no one else that you have to pay except yourself because it's you're a great singer. Fun. It's yeah. really fun. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I, you know, uh, I, I'd like to think of myself as a singer songwriter, but I could, I could be that when I'm playing the upright bass, you know, I can play my songs on the bass. But also, I can play my jazz standards too. Yeah. So I can, you know, I can, I can play uh, "Girl from Ipanema." I can sing uh, "Moaning," you know, just while just jamming on the bass and yeah. take a bass solo too. It's 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 a it's. It, I wish I could play three, but but it's fun. It's fun, and uh, yeah, and it was crazy because I went on the show um, as a bass player. And, and so it, it felt really, really cool. I, I don't think anyone's played the bass since as well. Um, I, I'd like to encourage people to do it, but sure. I, yeah, but I do, I do like that. I have been the only one in the, the 15 years that they've done it, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, um, it, it, doing all those instruments. Um, so you, do you only play drums? You play like a little piano? Oh yeah. You I mean, I, you know, I have functional harmony going on, you know, the piano and I have my master's degree with in classical percussion and big band. You know, I played in the one o'clock lab band in North Texas state. And then when I moved oh, wow. to Nashville, it was like, we're going to have to edit all that kid. And we're just going to have to learn how to play songs with three chords and the truth. And I did. <laughs> and then in that process, I, I met some really like-minded guys and we've been playing in Jason Aldean's band for, 21 years which is crazy that's insane congrats that's amazing well it's a it's a gig that keeps on giving which is and it's just such a wonderful thing in a business like this which is as we all know the music business is like the wild west there are, are no rules and uh you know how do you make a million dollars in the music business start with two <laughs> <laughs> i love yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the same as like hey how do you make a uh, hundred bucks as a jazz musician start with 200 exactly. that's right <laughs> well, we've got but, the running we've got the running joke of all the kids going to Berkeley and, and coming out with a bill of a quarter million dollars oh and then they gosh. have to go play the fifty dollar jazz standards gig at the pizza parlor. You know, how are they gonna pay bro, back that loan, you know? Bro, I am so lucky that I I did I did a year a uh, half a year of college, one semester, and I still had debt. It's all paid off. I paid yeah. it off like three years ago and it, I can't can believe it. Can we that. ask how much? Uh it was probably an in state school, right? Was it, it an in-state? It was around 1200 It was around 1200 $1, Actually, bucks? I went to, yeah, I went to CU Boulder. CU Boulder. Oh, yeah. And that, okay. I even got some money off. I, you know, I actually got that's, into, that's a, sorry, what? 
That, that's about what I paid per semester when I went. 1200 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. And I, I got a scholarship, so. but it still just did, it, it all added up. Um, I, and so I went to Idlewild Arts, which was a high school, boarding arts high school, greatest experience of my life. And then I went to college and it just, it didn't feel the same. And it kind of... It kind of, I don't know. It just didn't make me love music. But so, uh, so I started just, you know, pretending like I was going to audition for American Idol and then I did it. And then it, <laughs> it felt, it felt way, way better. But well, you know, cause, cause that's, that's your learning experience. Wait, what was the question? What were we talking about? I think we were talking about, oh, just the, 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 the high cost of high education. I mean, if you go to a performing arts high school like that, that is very, very deep and very advanced and there's all these like-minded people that are pushing themselves you can go to and and you can go to a college and it just doesn't compare because they, right. the, you know, I could right. see that. I could see yeah. that. But, but uh, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was sorry. What? what? No, no, so, so sorry. We don't have the zoom thing down quite yet. People can tell even like Howard Stern, like he's, they all talk on top of each other. I'm like, Oh God, we're going to be dealing I, with this for some time. I know. I wonder if it's ever, if this lag is ever going to uh, be, um, fixed. It's it's never. Like I don't wagging. know. Yeah. yeah, you think at this time, you think at this point they would have at least like by a couple milliseconds, right? Yeah, even Cisco. You know, WebEx on Cisco is which is like you know the <laughs> high end uh, Fortune one hundred version of Zoom. It has issues, oh, yeah. you know. It has issues? Okay. But I, but definitely, okay, I thought you were talking about the thong song guy. Okay, the so thong, he has, the thong, that, <laughs> he has three thong, Ciscos. Thong, there's thong, him, thong. the guy singing about his under about girls' underwear. There's the Cisco that runs the internet, and then there's the Cisco that has, like, table salt food. and sugar. Yeah. Right, yeah, the food the food <laughs> Cisco, yeah. That's why I feel but yeah, yeah, le- yeah. It's it's uh yeah. So so going to school. Um, I was there for a semester, and then I dropped out, and I was like, let's do Idol. And I think I think that 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 version of American Idol that season was mm-hmm. like the best, it, in my opinion, it, because it had it, it was the first season that ever had Steven Tyler and J Lo as judges. Yeah. And it was the first time where Simon left, and everyone could kind of breathe a little bit easier. You know, and I, I felt like I actually wanted to get judged by Simon, but at the, at the end of the day, man, being able to sing in front of, you know, your idols, you know, J-Lo, I'd, li- I'd actually dance to J-Lo. Uh, Come on, did you play that song? And then Steven Tyler, all his songs, every single thing, you know? So, yeah, they're all it, hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, that, hot. so that was 10 years ago? 10 years ago. Yeah, 2011. Okay, so that's crazy because yeah. we – Played as a guest on that show, and I remember J Lo and Steven Tyler being five feet away from the drums. And it was uh, Jason had a duet with Kelly Clarkson, and uh, we played on that show. And it was really crazy because I was I had my inner monitors, and we had to play to these some Pro Tools tracks. You know, like there was an electronic shaker and a string section. And our road manager at the time was like, "Don't worry, it's not live, live, right?" We had this crusty old man that we love him to death. We miss him so much, <laughs> but he's like. It's not live, live, but he had his information wrong. It was live, live. It was going out to millions of people. None of us had the Pro Tools tracks in our ears, and we were trying to get the monitor guy's attention, and within 10 seconds of, ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Clarkson, we got it in our ears, but it was live, live. That's so scary. I Uh, know. Sorry to hear that. It worked out. It worked out great. I, well, yeah, exactly. And I will say this, I, you know, I've been watching, I went to a couple of idols after my season, they weren't live, you know, you'd sit in the audience and it was just like, all right, play back. And you know, like 75% of everything that was happening was actually just pre-recorded. So sure. us as an audience were like, what's going on? So you might've been in like the heyday. And even though it was a little scary, I'm sure that you, you got a nice rush and some adrenaline as you're about oh, to play. There's something right? about, there's something about live music. You know, I think it was like Dick Clark back in the day who came up with the idea of like, Hey, you know, you know, he really a pioneered a lot of these music shows and award shows. Like we can get even more entertainment on our show if the acts just mime, you know, to the tracks, because we don't have to worry about so much, every little thing being plugged in with the pressure of live TV. Right. Which it is like, if the, if the microphone from the singer doesn't get plugged in, it's bad. Don't, news. don't you ever want to rebel though and flip the beat, like play your threes on two and stuff like that. Some, something like that happened you the know. other night uh, to me on live television in front of millions of people. What? And you just got to hold your, you got to hold your own, man. So wait, so Jason Aldean, 
Um, so you were with him and Kelly Clarkson. Was she? Wait, so does that mean that? Was, do you remember who she was duetting with? Was it? Oh, it was like, with Jason. Jason. Yeah. So Jason, was, uh, this might be out of your genre, that? but he's like the the most downloaded and awarded male country artist to like of all time. Right. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, so it, you might have been the season after me. I can't remember if it was the season after me or maybe it was my season as well because it could have been. I, I know. I feel like Kelly Clarkson was at our season finale. Do you remember who else was backstage with? Well, you? maybe she. Maybe she was just there because she's like so tied in with the brand and connected to right. that. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, but man, I mean, well, you know, you've done great things. I mean, you're still in your 20s and I'm looking at your recorded body of work and you listen to your music. Everybody do, their, do yourselves a favor and check out Casey Abrams' Spotify page and you're going to you're gonna hear music like there's some really, really poppy dance, like earwig, like soccer moms tapping on the dashboard <laughs> of their minivan stuff. There's, there's jazz standards that you sing and play the bass on. And there's the Eve Destruction type of stuff. And then you're even playing from time to time. I, will, I like to know about this. I love postmodern jukebox where it's like yeah. a 1930s or 40s take on, you, get, you do a version of Stacy's Mom. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. That's so, yeah, we... Sorry, what? Is that something that you uh, uh, are you still playing with them from time to time? Yeah, well, they're so they're not touring and they're not really putting out videos. I know that the creator Scott Bradley, he's he's doing a couple of videos from home every once in a while, but they've kind of stopped doing things. But uh, yeah, I, I've been doing just little minute long takes on my Instagram and TikTok. But but yeah, no, postmodern jukebox is like it's almost like the second coming of American Idol, and it's kind of what I was doing on the show already, which was just making a cover sound like my own, which was jazzy already. Yeah. So it it's it's a really cool thing to be a part of yeah it's it's literally it's literally um just taking a justin bieber song or, or you know uh you know fountains of wayne song and making it sound like uh louis armstrong sang it you know that's the, that's the coolest thing ever and i'm glad yeah. you know about them you know yeah. so i would used to tour with them i was like the host so i would i would be like the mc and be like ladies and gentlemen welcome to postmodern jukebox and then introduce people it was so fun and then i'd, I'd sing a couple songs as well that's great it was fun man and it's and it's real because it's you know, because when I did the American Idol tour, I mean, listen, it was like 10,000 people a night, man, for 50 dates. For Arenas. Yeah, Amazing. amphitheaters. Beautiful. Arenas. Yeah, it was it was beautiful. It was like that was the greatest moment of my life. Um, but, you know, like it, at the end of the day, we had those things. We had those ear monitors, right? Yeah. We put them in and there's, you know, you'd hear someone in your, your thing go like, all right, all right, bass play and one, two, three, four. And you'd play it and then you'd hear there'd be like tracks that were already like, uh, queued up and they had to be because we had big visuals that were queued up to sure. the same thing. You know, the visual, if, if you, if they get, if they go awry, it doesn't work, but that's the beautiful part of, po of postmodern jukebox. Like I literally walk on stage and we're about to sing Africa and I'd just be like one, two, oh, I could do, I could, you know, I can, I can count it off. Whatever nice. I can, if, if I'm feeling it slow, I'll be like one, two, you know, you even go slower, you know, but it's real music and it's real musicians. And I think not only do us as uh, singers and musicians feel it, but the audience feels it as well. Cause we don't know what we're going to do, you know? So when that band was touring, where were they playing? Like, like theaters, like Iridium type rooms and, uh, uh, a little bit bigger. Actually, we, um, we had played some of the same places we played with the American Idol tour, like, uh, the Microsoft theater. And, um, and then we also played radio city music hall. Beautiful. Um, How do you get to yeah. radio city music hall? What? How do you get to radio city music hall, Jim? Knowing the right person. No practice. <laughs> that, that's, that's an old, music, it's all, it's an old musician uh, thing. Yeah. No hey, what do you call those? Uh, what do you call those guys that hang out with musicians? Drummers. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, it would be, it would be so fun to put my zoot suit on and like and, and have a wide open bass drum and my temple blocks and my Chinese tom toms and my little old nineteen twenties cymbals and do the dot li dot li da do 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 I mean, people would freak Actually, out. I got one of your tracks pulled up. Can you guys hear this? <laughs> nope. <laughs> 
You can. <laughs> All right, never mind. Then we got to go back to the. Well, let's let's if it's do that on our, mine. It sounds great. Let's do that on our off time. <laughs> but I just encourage everybody to check out. Yeah, your your Spotify page because it's it's like a definitely a, a a tour de force of musical styles and to be so young and so accomplished. And I love the fact that you you I could see you being an MC because you have this naturally outgoing personality because there's a lot of bass players I've worked with in the jazz idiom that are not outgoing guys. They're very insular and very quiet and they, they speak through their instrument and you're like, no, I'm going like to act. Kelly. You were in a, you were in a, in a film. Uh, yeah. Kelly, aren't you? Oh yeah. We have our, our, my bass player totally that I've been playing with for 20 years. He just, he uh, just stares you down when you come into the room. He's like a he moth to up. the flame on the stage, wherever there's cameras or, um, Attractive people in the audience. That's where he's going. Good. Kelly good, and yeah. I have a uh, have a storied past, and uh, it's well, kind of interesting. Hopefully, you'll it's be kind of like at some it, point. It, it's kind of like George, uh, um, uh, Jerry, and uh, <laughs> Newman. Hello, Newman. Yeah. Hello, Which one's Tully. So, okay, so Rich is Jerry. <laughs> oh wait, who's who's who? I'm the Jerry, and I think uh, Tully's the Newman. I'm, I'm just going to put it on him. Oh, okay. Tully's the bass player. <laughs> Sorry, Tully, Tully's Tully's right. the bass player. And every time I've been around him, it's like Kurt, the guitar player, and, and Rich and Kurt and Tully have been a trio, the uh, the uh, the three kings, if you will, for yeah. uh, 90, 99. Yeah. And <clears throat> every time I meet, you know, Kurt's always a hugger. He's always affable. Kurt just kind of does the, <laughs> you know, with the, with the thought right. you can read on his face of, what are you doing in my studio? Oh, jeez. Jim, yeah. but really what's really important now is that microphone that you're talking to that usually sounds so good sounds like you have given it a bath in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> it's so dark and so muffled. I don't know what the really? hell you did. But so Casey, tell tell us about the is that you have the acting bone? Is that something you want to continue to do? I love it, man. Yeah. Uh, I was in this um this indie, this indie film. And uh, it was really cool because I got to work with the voice of Lisa Simpson, Yardley Smith. Oh yeah. And, yeah, and um, and uh, Ed Marinera, who's uh, who is in uh, what's that Blue State? What's it called? Blue Mountain State. That it's a it's a Netflix show. Oh, uh, Ozarks. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's Ozark. It's called Blue Mountain State. Oh, gotcha, it's, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, and then, who? No, there's some other. Oh, oh, dude, and Eric Avari, man. He was he was this cool. He's a really cool guy, and he's actually on my record. We got to. He got to introduce me on um, one of my EPs called Tales from the Gingerbread House. And he's, he's this, he's this uh, Indian slash British sounding guy. He's really cool. And he, um, he plays my boss. He was also the butler in, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Mr. Deeds. He sings. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just a man. Blah, 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 blah. He sings the, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the David Bowie line in the helicopter. I what think you're talking world? about, uh, what's his name? I, have, I like a defeat. Oh, no, not uh, that guy. Um, yeah, you One know what I'm talking things. about? Yeah. You know, no, they filmed that, that movie, My Old Hometown. I got to meet Adam Sandler when they filmed that movie. Yeah. Oh, everyone just great. says a nice guy, nice guy, you know, and yeah. everyone says that. That's so, why he's so successful. Oh, yeah. So, you yeah. know, give the people what they want. They want to laugh right. over two hours of popcorn and wake up with the popcorn all over their lap and, and then just have a good time. <laughs> Emerge feeling better than when they went in. The Rich Redman Show will be right back. Henry Ford once said that if you need a machine and don't buy it, then you will ultimately find that you have paid for it and don't have it. Nothing could be truer about energy-efficient LED lighting in your business. At Big Dot Lighting, we can show you how a portion of your savings from a commercial LED lighting upgrade will be paid for in hardly any time at all. Until then, you're paying for them anyway. Book a no-cost lighting energy assessment with Big Dot Lighting. At least 30% of your utility bill is waiting to be saved. Go to BigDotLighting.com. Are you a drummer looking to expand your drumming vocabulary or take your career to the next level? You can connect with me for one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons and consultations that are now 30% off. I cover topics like styles, reading music, the Nashville number system, charting, music business 101, and career guidance. Simply send me an email at booking at richredmond.com to schedule. And for more information on all of my products and services, visit richredmond.com. This is the Rich Redman Show. 
So, yeah. so how did that how did that come around? And can we watch it on Amazon Prime or anything? Love yes, on Amazon Prime. Exactly. I'm doing it tonight, man. Oh yeah, please. It, but it's funny, man, because you learn a lot about yourself when you're acting. You know, because when you're singing a song that you wrote, you feel it. You become that character, and you become. You know, like I read a lot about a lot about women, a lot about like heartbreak, a lot about you know. I have this song called Cougar Town. It's about hooking up with mature women. You know, yeah. it's, it's fun. It's fun. I made a career of that until I got too old to date older women. Cause then they were, so you, you yourself were a cougar. No, I was a cougar yeah. hunter. Yeah. You are the, you are right. the cougar now. Yeah. 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 The Fox. Really? I don't know. Something like that, but you really relate to it. And, and you know, when I'm singing, I'm method acting and, and I think that I wasn't trying to method act, but you, you do anyway, because you know, you, yeah, my character was Travis. He was just this this kid that was kind of depressed, really good at math, <clears throat> and worked at a in a cubicle, and was just very just didn't just hated life. And so I did that for three months, and I kind of ended up hating life, you know, because you start feeling this character. And so, uh, it, and when I watch it back, I'm like, wow, yeah, you you feel that. So Casey, three the, months that way you filmed, yeah, on set. Yeah. That's a long yeah. time. Yeah, in Atlanta. Yeah. So was the director the, oh. the super – because sometimes when you think indie film, you're thinking 12 days, you know? But right. 90 days? Wow, that's good. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was indie, but uh, I, I guess I said indie, but I, I don't know. I guess I don't know what indie means. I guess it's on Android, Amazon Prime. I guess it's like a real movie. Let's, yeah, let's man. Just call it that, I guess. Yeah. Are, well, are you still getting? Uh, did you did you get your SAG card from that, or you? Or I that did. Yeah. 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 And I still I still get it every once in a while. Um. Uh, in fact, I just recently uh, last year did a voice voice thing. I played this. Uh, I, I played an avocado. <laughs> this it, it was a uh, my favorite Mexican, fruit. Yeah, exactly. It was this Mexican cartoon that was adapted to American TV and uh, called Waka in Tito. And I think Waka Tito means, uh, what does it mean? I think it means uh, guacamole. Oh, gotcha. So I, yeah, so, so I, yeah, it's a really cool episode. I, I just played a couple episodes. The Halloween, one of the Halloween special where I, I, I dress up as a superhero and we, we beat this, uh, we beat up this zombie jelly you know, and we beat his ass. It's so cool. It's really cool, man. So I, I love acting and I've even been doing my own music videos, just shooting them on my iPhone and editing, editing them on premiere, having a good time, man. I am blown away by some of your videos. I mean, uh, there, you, you did like a cover of the stars born, the shallow song with a, oh, with, yeah. a young, with a young gal. And, and I love uh, the, the, the creativity, you know, the, the guitarist emerges around the other side of the tree and you kind of nod at him and you kind of, it's a walk and talk. And then, yeah, there, there's a, a lot of your videos. Um, like I was thinking to myself, Get Out is like pure pop music. And then yeah. Let's Make Out is kind of like stripped down and folky. And then you've got this cowbell song with kind <laughs> of a great video. I, I'm just blown away by your creativity. It seems like everything you do, you want to leave your creative mark. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think it's it's a hint of ADD, it's a hint of boredom, but it's just it's just let's go to the next thing, you know? And that's yeah. it's 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 hard to com complete a, a task a lot of the time and and I found that out during college, man. I was like I'm learning, you know, I'm learning how to do ba Beethoven's uh fifth and how to, you know, rearrange it so it makes, you know, secular sense. I don't even know what I'm saying. But it, I was like I hate this. I hate this. Why am I doing this? And so I would mm. I would make songs in in my dorm room you know what i mean uh oh oh someone's calling me here oh, <laughs> oh it's paul mcdonald it's paul mcdonald oh the bass my... player from bon joey <laughs> no no he was actually oh that's uh, hugh mcdonald sorry i i, I yeah. thought about it last night because he was on tv playing with uh, bon jovi last night with his white hair and i was like and my girlfriend was like is there any original members and i'm like yeah the bass player hugh actually played on all those early recordings and then when the actual live bass player was fired for substance stuff, you know, it's a typical story. Hugh came back. So oh, I thought wow. he, that's, uh, that's hard. They, just, he, nice. they didn't like taking in from like inside information outside the, uh, inside circle. What? That's what I had heard. <laughs> what, what you the original <laughs> bass player for Bon Jovi. Oh yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that story. Yeah. I, I usually, if somebody gets fired, it's usually just like, Oh yeah, there's a substance problem. I don't know. I you might know, be wrong. You know, it's crazy. Um, I, I was in Mexico and we were doing, uh, they, sometimes they just pay you to like walk a red carpet and just come to their, uh, their, um, uh, we went to, uh, what's the, what's that rock and roll uh, like hard a, rock cafe. Yeah. The heart, but it was a hard rock hotel 
in oh, yeah. Mexico. Oh, nice. And we went to go see it, and Bon Jovi was playing at the actual resort hotel. Did you go see it? Oh yeah, we were no, we we literally our rooms were like right there. We could like just we walked out and watched it on our our porch. It was amazing, but That's cool. it was so funny. They because they that we 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 watched the whole thing. They started off with Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band, which oh, wow. is like not it's like that's Beatles, but anyway, they killed it, dude. They left and they did not play. Uh, oh, we're living on a prayer. Everyone was like living on a Party prayer. Party did not come back, man. People were there oh. for twenty minutes screaming "Living on a Prayer." They did not come back on stage. I thought that that was that was crazy. That's a tough one. That's like going to see Aerosmith and they don't do Dream On. Right. Yeah, exactly. Or Love in uh, an Elevator. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, and it's cool because uh, Jack Black, you know, a Tenacious D, you know, you, you go to a Tenacious D concert. What do you think they're going to They're, they're going to play a tribute, you know? And so yeah. I thought it was going to be one of those moments because I remember seeing Tenacious D a couple times live in concert. And they, they let they let the audience chant for like a good 10 minutes. And they were saying, tribute. And they came in, came on, the, li- the lights went dark. People went crazy. And I had a good conversation with Jack afterwards. We, we've, we befriended each other on the well, show. Yeah, because he, he played with you on American Idol. You guys did Fat yeah. Bottom Girls, right? Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they surprised me. They're like, we're gonna give you, we're gonna give the top six special guests, and so uh, you know, like Haley Reinhardt got Tony Bennett. Uh, I think so. That's what I was asking because I thought I know that Scotty McCreary got one, some country guy that I can't remember. I was like, maybe it's Jason. It was like maybe you played with Jason. So I mean, but yeah, they gave me Jack Black, Amazing. and it was. It was really cool. And so I remember talking to him and I told him that story. I was like, dude, I saw you and you played tribute. I was like such a fan girl. I was so, I'm so embarrassed by myself, but he, he came up, he, he, we were talking. He was like, you know what? I'm a firm believer of giving the people what they want. Give oh, the, yeah. g- give them a show and just, you know what they want. Give it to them. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, you know, hold it off a little bit, but give it to them. You know, yeah. so they, they always can give, give you tribute. And uh, they don't seem like they're, they're, they hated the song yet, you know, they, they love it. They love yeah, it. Man. So. Well, that had to be fun. Yeah. Oh, it was so fun. I mean, just the whole idol experience. And then that happening, I'm, I'm going to brag about that for the rest of my life, man. So yeah, Jack, man, Jack's people... like the nicest guy ever. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he did such a good job in that School of Rock. School of Rock was our sponsor for so long. And Jim and I are so tied in with the School of Rock. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a, what a great film. Oh my God. Yeah, so good. I, I watched it again um, a couple months ago, just by myself, man. It, it made me cry. It's, it's so uplifting. It's music, man. You're, you're tapped into your emotion, man. You really are. You're you're tapped in there. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, you have to be if you're especially. That's why it's it's great that to, to talk to you. I, you know, I, I didn't um I didn't know too much about you before we were going on, so it's it's really great to talk to. Uh, a fellow musician about life because it, you know, everything's related, right? You know, the way, you know, sure. the way you drive a car, the way you have conversations, the way you play music, the way you do it in bed, but it, not that we'll ever do that, but you know, it's like <laughs> everything is everything. So our, you know, I'm sure, that we would jam, I'm sure that we would jam well too. So, Oh, know. I mean, I mean, the, 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 the funny thing is, is that I don't know how this happens and it'll happen to you too, but you'll, you'll be the, you'll be the hot kid on campus. Like, yeah, that's the kid, man. He's in the, this playing in the, this. and you know, next, thing you know you're like you and i are separated by like two generations of musicians but we it's so great that we have that um that commonality the music is this universal language and it transcends bare language barriers and cultural barriers and you could just cut to the chase you know right and you know it's beautiful i was thinking about it. it's like we can do this for the rest of our lives i have a bass teacher who's in his 80s he's like 85 86 he used to play with miles davis who was my teacher in idol of the arts marshall hawkins he's amazing yeah. he's still doing it he's still every every tuesday night he'll he'll play at a local restaurant he'll do a couple gigs in san diego he'll drive himself down it's it's like you know i, I feel very lucky to be in an art form that is gonna that's gonna take us to the end of our lives you know at you know if you're if you're in sports which i'll never knock it man because i i still you know we love to run right yeah but you know there's a certain period you know dancers you know um uh you know the certain type of you know uh, all the athletes we you know there's a certain there's a certain thing after you've played all the athletes you either teach or you go into uh you, you know 
commentating or commenting or whatever they call yeah, it, yeah, yeah. which is not a bad thing, which is like, that's, that's, that's actually a pretty good deal, you know, that's like just one. seeing Shaq just hang out and just talk about, Hey, that was great. You know, like, I'd hmm. love to do that. Well, I guess we're kind of doing that too. We're just, well, I mean, Shaq's got a talking. great agent cause he took, he took that notoriety and the, the guy's in a million commercials. He's got a million different brands products that he's endorsing he's, he had his own uh, right. a pizza with pizza hut or Domino's. yeah the shackinator i'm like who that Not guy's got a good agent that guy yeah. has got no but you literally we can do this forever there's no shelf life yeah dancers their joints start going at 35 their butt starts to sag a little bit they ain't dancing at the vmas you know what i mean <laughs> but it but it's like i mean i look at someone like a, a jazz drummer like roy haynes he was always i i uh, shame on me, but I think Roy Haynes is still alive and he's in his way upper 80s and he still plays bebop jazz it's fast, every right? week. Yeah. Fast, yeah. It's insane. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, all those guys. So it's really inspirational. I mean, and, and the style that you get to, to wear, you know, you, you, get to, you get to wear the same thing. Like I look at uh, uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Who's the dude with the, st the stash? I should know this. Um, Crosby, David Crosby. That's Crosby. Yeah, yeah, Crosby. He he still wears what he he used to wear, you know, 40, 50 years ago. So he's killing it, man. Good for him, you know. I want to be. I want to go. I want to go to a concert and just be able to wear this, or maybe a suit and tie, you know. Well, you're you know you're the you're the leader. You can wear that whatever the hell you want, man. You yeah, exactly. You. Yeah, that's. Have you seen what? Part. Have you guys seen what David Crosby said uh, after Van Halen? Eddie Van Halen died. No, what did he say? Did you guys catch that? He was no. somebody had asked about, uh, you know, hey, what do you think about Eddie Van Halen? He's like, you know, I met him a couple of times, but his music, meh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, okay. He got roasted. Ouch. He got flamed on Twitter. That's, that's okay. That's okay. It's it's good to have a little controversy. That's um, why he's he's like, yeah. you know, hey man, I came up with the Laurel Canyon sound. I don't know, you may have heard of it. <laughs> yeah. And then he's um, like, Yeah, I came up with the brown sound and you know, yeah, changed yeah. guitar playing for forever. <laughs> for all time. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I I'll, I'll say something a little controversial. You know, it you, you don't have to like all the popular music. Um I, I'm still getting into him and there's a lot of songs that I still like, but I still feel like I need to get into a little bit of Prince. I I still sure. feel like there's uh, there's I, I think maybe it's just because I'm a bass player and a lot of his tracks don't have a lot of bass. In fact, Kiss, right? Like you're you, he that there's no bass in that song. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, I don't think I, there's bass in When Doves Cry either. It's just a Lynn drum machine and just a lot of you know. Right, right. Emoting. So I'm biased because I'm like, can I can I play some bass on that? So I. I I, I think I need to be get hit to a couple more things, but there's there's a couple things actually later in his life that I really like. Um, the one where Dave Chappelle was on his cover, it was "Breakfast Can Wait." That's a really good song, and "Musicology" is really good. But yeah, I, there's there's a couple of songs that I still, uh, you know, I, I yeah. If you get, if you send me some things, if you got some, you know. What if you put some bass on those things? That would if be. I put them? Yeah, like literally, like yeah, like 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 just crank them up, and this is like if there was bass on this song, this is what I would do. Yeah, I'd do that. That'd that be could cool. be a good Whatever viral would video. Me, that could be a viral video. Uh, that could be a viral video. That's yeah. a good idea. That's not a bad idea. Oh, my kudos, gosh. Rich. Okay. Yeah, well, and occasionally I'll have a, 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 you know, I don't drool out of both sides of my mouth. Um, <laughs> uh, I have a lot of good ideas. Trouble is most so of them So many suck. drummer jokes. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have a drummer? Where, now, before this all shut down, were you touring with, with, your, with your own act? Do you have your a set band? Um, yeah, well, I don't have a set band. I have a group of people I usually like to play with, and uh, they, they're they're all usually multi talented, uh, multi instrumentalists. Nice. And uh, yeah, I was in I was in the middle of my uh, my um, un uncovered uh, tour, you know, r promoting the last thing I did, yeah. and uh, so we 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 had about twelve dates planned, and uh, I think I got six, so we only did half. But man, it was such a great tour. It was so good. We we did all the East Coast stuff. We we did it in uh, New York, Philadelphia, um, uh, New Jersey, um, and then we we even ended in Toronto. It was it was uh, the first time I ever played in Toronto, and I played. It was like all it was like a lot of my original stuff and a lot of jazz stuff, and it was yeah. really cool. I was I was I, you know it's always me playing on the bass, the upright bass, and singing, and I bring an electric bass just in case. But I'm like. I don't need to. Are you are but, you a pop and slap guy or nah? Pop and slap. 
Seinfeld. No. No. I'll here. I'll I'll show you. I, I kind of do it on the upright bass. Though. Oh it's yeah, the, really like, like the, the blue, like the um, like not bluegrass, but yeah. Here, uh, yeah. It's kind of like rockabilly. <laughs> Oh, that is beautiful. Hey, Casey, well, you got that. Do you want to do a song for us? Yeah, I do. Yeah. That'd be great, man. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, sure, man. We had, John, we had Jonathan Brooke on where she was like, well, since that guitar is over in the corner, go pick it up, you know? So this is happening more and more these days. Okay, cool. Hey, uh, let, me, let me think of a good song. Um, hmm. You do a little Primus? <laughs> You're going way back. <laughs> I can do that on my pick. Jerry was a race car driver. Driver. Go some goddamn pounds. Or how about, actually, I could. When I grow up, I want to be a fisherman upon the sea. So yeah, like man. That. Plus, the long hair just really legitimizes it, makes oh, it really it feels exciting. Good. It feels good, man. Uh, <sighs> here, I, I got a song. Uh, I know that that was. Uh, oh, I got. Uh, w sorry, what were you saying? I was just gonna say, no pressure, but whatever comes to mind. Okay, here I'll I'll do I'll do a song. Okay, I like this song. Can I say the F word? Sure. Okay. The FCC is <laughs> not really on podcasts. <laughs> okay. All right, let me just tune up. You know what? Here, check this out. I'm going to lower this so you can see a little bit more. You're hearing it here first, kids. When you start in the orchestra, you have to play this instrument, and it's a man's instrument. feels so good. I love playing the bass, man. <clears throat> I could walk your dog for you or detail your car. Bring you pretty flowers, buy you drinks at a bar. Help you cross an intersection like a good boy scout Or we could just cut this bullshit and make out I'd feed you a four-course meal or bowl of Lucky Charms Whatever it would take to get your sweet ass in my arms Yeah, we'd go to Bob's Big Boy and totally pig out or we could just cut this bullshit and make out, make out, make out, make out. Can we skip all the formalities and go back to your house and make out? Let's make out. I'd show you my collection of Star Wars figurines Give you chocolate-covered pretzels or green apple jelly beans I'd be happy to do all the things they say the love's about Or we could just cut this bullshit And make out, make out Let's make out. I might be cut into the chase, but I'm still a fan of chivalry. You know you want it, so you can't be mad at me. Oh, we could waste a lot of time trying to cut into this formal man's. But I'm just a guy, and I kind of lie, and I want to get in those pants. I could fly us both to Paris to stand on the Eiffel Tower 
Serenade you with my guitar play Tenacious D for hours But fuck that, let's make out Make out Make out Make out Can we skip all the formalities And go back to your house to make out Let's make out Let's make out. Yeah. Dude, that is good. There's so much soul, so much conviction, so much musicianship. It's memorable as hell. I think that the next Tinder or Bumble would be smart to license that from you, man. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Hopefully. Let's cross our fingers, man. That is killer. Mm. Appreciate it. Man, so That's, fun. Uh, it's yeah. almost oh, like yeah. you can put that out there and let people collaborate on it and build a song. Oh, I can hear, yeah. I can hear big harmonies on the, that last part. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's that's no. kind of how the the record goes. Uh, I have I have my good buddy Taylor Tesler playing guitar and harmonizing, and my good buddy Jacob Sesney, who usually plays sax but is playing the cajon, and we're all doing some three part harmonies in this uh, abandoned church where we recorded, and we start walking out. Make out, make out, so fun. And that's usually how I end my set. We start singing make out. We leave, go to the merch table through the audience. Man, that's great. Uh, I would Fun. love to see one of your shows. I mean, when we were, we're all getting into the same space at the same time. I'm going to put on my best threads. I'm going to have a couple cocktails and I'm going to come to one of your shows, man. Oh, I'm going to jump up and play an LT tambourine and just shake it all night long. <laughs> like, we <laughs> can't get rid of Redmond. Oh, no, we can't no. get rid of him. <laughs> Dude, hey, man. Hey, I'll, uh, you'll, uh, we'll get you. Uh, I'll get. I'll, you get my e email after this. We'll, we'll definitely hang out. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, right before, um, I went on tour, I had a couple, uh, things at the hotel cafe. Have you been there? Sure. Love it. It's yeah. right up the street. Yeah. Yeah. The second, the second room. Um, yeah. I, so I would have uh, just a weekly thing and it was, it was just me and a bass and I would just have fun guests come up, you know, drums, singing, clarinet, saxophone, guitarists, you know, mic. tap dancers, you know, yeah. so yeah. come, come by, man. I love that. Wow. That was really, really enjoyable. Th Jim, is this that time yeah. of the show that I think it is? Oh, hold on. Maybe it is. I got to find the stupid he's gotta, single. Here we go. You got to find the right friend button. Question, friend, question, friend, question of the day. Yes, it is, Casey. It is that time of the show for the random question chosen by a random question generator that I have right here. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. I, I, I'm nervous. What goal? I, I'm, I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Yeah. You should be nervous. <laughs> what I goal? This whole program was random questions. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. This one's, uh, I try to make one come out of left field. What goal do you think humanity is not focused enough on achieving? Hmm, okay. That's a deep one. That's deep. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me just give me a sec. You can always uh, do a pass if you want to. <laughs> okay. Pass, pass, puff? Or no, puff, puff. Okay, what? I'm getting that mixed up. Okay, give me a sec here. Puff, puff, pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, one second. What is, is there's, there's a couple questions you're going to ask too? No, we just got one. And if uh, I okay, let me, let me, my, my, it's not loading another one. So. Let's, yeah, I, I like that one. Let, let me just think about it some more. <laughs> what is humanity Sorry. not focused on enough? What goal? Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's very obvious, man. It's very obvious. It's the well being of the brain. It's, just, it's not, it's not happening. Cause what, what are we all focused on, man? What do we, what do we all look at when we're not, when we're not, uh, what is a part of us these days? You know, what, you know, what's not nature? It's all our phone. It's our computer, you know? And, uh, I don't know if you've seen the social dilemma. Have you seen that I one? I loved it. I loved it. 
It's so good. And it really is a good perspective. Man, in fact, in the past three days, man, wow. I, I've been posting TikToks and like just, just there's a song uh, called All I Want Are Comments. I wrote it because that's all, at the end of the day, man, I just go to my phone. I'm, I'm dying here because literally I'm on my phone right now. I can't check Instagram. This is horrible. <laughs> I know, you know, giving up Instagram for 10 days will, is a good thing. I did it right after that, that documentary. Yeah? Yeah, I did it for 10 days. And you know what? And? It was good. It was I'm really back on it. <laughs> felt really good. Back on it, of course I went back on it, but I just take breaks. But you know what, to your point, man, um, I feel like I learned so much when I went to Ethiopia. There was, uh, I did a documentary maybe about five years ago, and I still, their Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, they all still exist. But man, even if you had a cell phone, you didn't have the best cell, cell phone reception in Addis Ababa where I was staying. And you'd have to, where we were staying, you'd have to, I, I know this sounds like a joke, I had to walk in a mile to get to the computer cafe to hook up my computer to check my emails, you know, good exercise yeah. and you check it, you know, it was a good, <clears throat> but man, the way that people interacted over there, the way that people um, just, you know, what, you know, what do you see when you go out? It's, it's this, it's this, you only see the, no. the top of people heads, pe people's yeah. heads, man. Yeah. And it's, it's going to happen, but man, it was magic to be there. And, you know, we would find ourselves playing like hacky sack with soccer balls. We would play a lot of music. We would, you know, have a lot of campfires. We would talk more. And I, you know, yeah. it's, it was, it was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing to not have that technology. Uh, at, it was, and it was a force. It was a forceful thing. I, you know, I wanted it. Uh, it was like, please let me check my space, but I couldn't, you know, <laughs> and it was, it was for, it was for the, it was for, for better. And, you know, for like maybe a year after that, I, I was just more in tune, you know, and I, it's, it's kind of hard. And I think be, it's, it's beautiful to be here in Prescott, Arizona, because there is so much sunshine, you know, sunshine, lollipops. Can I go here? Like, look at like, this. Oh, it's just, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. For you guys that are consuming this with your ears, you're missing the beauty, the beauty of Prescott, Arizona. Yeah. I, I, just, I, I just, I love the desert, man. I love Arizona. Arizona and dude, it's beautiful, man, because, uh, it's, it's actually like Idlewild up in Prescott because we're in the mountains. So we're like 6,000 feet up and it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, uh, colder than the rest of Arizona. So it's really, yeah. If there's something beautiful about just being around this many trees, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, what do you, what do you, what do you want to do in five years? What's the vision? <laughs> I'd like to be a uh, producer of music, music producer? and Music and uh, oh, TV shows because nice. I've been I just I love editing I love telling stories I think we all as musicians like telling stories as well you know and helping tell stories but uh, yeah I I I, I do want to act as well uh, man I, it's I'm so selfish I want to do everything you know I want to be that Renaissance man but I just um, think you're going to be doing everything you're doing now but it continue to grow on a higher level that's like my exact vision is that every five years that moves by everything that I'm doing creatively I just want to be doing it on a higher level man right yeah. right I, yeah. I, yeah thank you and you know what I think it is it's it's also like just just meeting more people you know it's like don't don't we all want to play with a certain celebrity don't we all want to meet that really cool person that that just seems like super down to earth or just like is a big pop star or a big actor. It's like, don't you just want to hang out with that person? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think it's like, yeah, I'll, I want to keep doing what I'm doing, except maybe just keep meeting really cool people. And it's happening. It's just the more that you do it, it's all about consistency, man. I, you know, in this, in this pandemic, man, I've been releasing so many songs that I, that I had, that I wrote 15 years ago, you know, and, and, and who, who cares if it, what, what kind of attention it gets. It's out there in the public, you know, and, and just, you just got to be consistent with yourself and then that consistency will come catch up with you, you know? I love it. Well, I think everybody in this audience needs to support you and your music and look up Casey Abrams on Spotify and go to Amazon Prime and support the film Love and Debt. I know I'm going to consume that. Um, and you want to be found, right? What's the best way for people to find you on the socials? Uh, so Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, it's all at Casey Basie. And then um, I'm on uh, Facebook, just I am Casey Abrams. I got a Patreon as well, just Casey Abrams at yeah. Patreon. And you can support me that way. How does and, that work, uh, yeah. that Casey? How does that that work? Because I was always uh, interested about Patreon. Yeah. How does well, that work? It's, 
basically you just give them exclusive content that you can't find anywhere else or just, you know, have little phone conversations with them. And it's, you know, people sign up to, to, to be a patron of your art form. And Amazing. so I, I, yeah, and it's really good. And, and I really love my, my patrons of Patreon, you know, so it's really good. I love that, man. Well, that, you know, I'm going to maybe look into that, man. I, I, I appreciate the, the, uh, the insight on that. Big fan of your music, man. I'm looking forward to maybe cross-pollinating in some way. Thank you so much for your time today, man. Oh, man, I really appreciate talking with you, man. It's gone by really fast. I really appreciate it, Rich, and I, I hope to see you perform one day, too. We'll do it, man. That is a great song. Jim, as always, man, did you have a good time today, bud? Yes, sir. Yeah, man, your micro your microphone <laughs> sounds like hell today, but it is it is nothing against your talent. Jim McCarthy voiceovers dot com. We love you and appreciate you. And for everybody out there, we're coming up on a hundred episodes of this sucker, and we really appreciate you supporting it. If you want to praise us or give us some comments or some feedback, I got an email address for you: the Rich Redmond Show at gmail dot com. And as always, keep coming back for the good stuff. We'll be here. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Casey. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe. Rate and follow along at richredmond.com.